What's going on reef builders? I'm Jake Adams coming back to you from the reef builder studio. I am standing in front of the 400 gallon planet aquarium that I intend to build up specifically for Acropora. So the last time I showed you this tank, I think we were, we had finished up the plumbing on the closed loop, which is very tightly done underneath this tank. And we have two uh, Ecotech Marine Vectra L2. Those are the largest uh, centrifugal pumps that they make. And since then, I have gotten all of the primary plumbing accomplished. I added some sweeps here to try to reduce some of the pressure. But the whole purpose of this build was to use what's called a, an adductor. This is a real adductor. And the way it works is it has a little nozzle right here and the pressure basically goes through this trumpet shape and multiplies the flow. So loosely put, if the Vectra can put out 3,000 gallons per hour, this will knock it back by about 1,500 gallons per hour, this, this nozzle right here, but then the trumpet will multiply it, the adductor, um, by a factor between three and five, so I'm kind of going by the middle number of four. So we're knocking it down by half, and then we're multiplying it by four, so we're getting probably about double what the flow rate inside the tank that the pumps can provide. So loosely 5,000 to 6,000 gallons per hour. Um, we're gonna come back to the closed loop, but this is a real adductor. This is a one inch, and the ones you see inside are one and a half inch. All right, so that's the closed loop. We got the adductors. And now the other thing that's really important is the drain, all right? So this is a planted aquarium. Um, anytime I think you get a, like a larger tank of this size, it's gonna kind of come pre-drilled. Gone are the days of having like a large internal overflow box. That is not very cool. So there's a very thin, just almost disappearing overflow box there in the back. You can probably see a little bit better from above with the combs. And um, there's an external overflow box on that. This particular tank came with three one and a half inch holes to drain down to the bottom of the tank. Um, I have copied a system over there that's a similar volume and similar flow rate. And I've plugged up one of the holes. One of the holes is a continuous drain and then the other hole is used as a uh, emergency overflow. Because we're in the uh, lockdown and quarantine, I thought I'd be a little clever and order some bulkheads online. And you know, they were a few bucks cheaper, but you know what? I set this thing up, set that overflow box up, went to a lot of trouble to try to tighten them up, and every single one of these leaked. I can't tell you why, but for some reason, these bulkheads are just a little bit thinner, the nut slips, and the gasket on them is really hard. It's just really hard and has no rubberiness to it. So after messing around with the overflow box for what seemed like way too long, I finally decided, all right, I'm gonna go to the fish stores, went to the store that I know has a big supply of these, thanks to Aquamart for having these in stock. And I got the brand name Lifeguard Aquatics. They look almost identical with this, except they're a little bit thicker and the gasket is actually soft and rubbery. And you know, as soon as I popped those on the overflow box, everything was fine. And we're able to fill up the tank and put on basically a test sump. So instead of going directly to the finished product, this is still like kind of in testing. So if you look down here, we've got basically about an 80 gallon sump. And this is the continuous overflow. This is the emergency overflow. I've got it dialed in perfectly right now to where the water level in the box is even with the bulkheads that are on the tank going to the external box. Um, and if, if you have a tank anywhere be over 50 gallons, 100 gallons, and you have an overflow box of any kind, you really should be using this uh, continuous siphon drain because it is dead silent. There's no gurgling, there's no sloshing, there's no splashing. Um, and the only noise that we can hear from this system is actually a little bit of the back pressure. So the adductor puts some back pressure on the pumps and that's the only thing you can hear. If I take the adductors off, uh, the pumps are completely, completely silent. So right now, the closed loops are closed and you may not have seen that I actually have 
adductors, three quarter inch adductors here for the return flow. The adductors are knocking down the flow by about half, but then they're multiplying it by, let's again, this factor of four. See, there's the three quarter inch bulkheads on both sides of the tank. So right now, all the water flow that we see is only from the returns, and there's not really that much in the tank right now to show off the flow, but there is a little layer of film and scum inside. So I think if I wipe that down, we'll get some particles floating around. So let me go ahead and do that, and then you should be able to see the water flow coming just from the returns, and then we're gonna fire up the closed loop, and you'll see what kind of water sheet machine this tank has become. So I normally like to suggest to people and advise them not to count the flow from your return pump as part of your flow inside the tank. But since I have so much kinetic energy coming to the aquarium already from the return uh, outlets, I might as well put some adductors on there. So right now, uh, the adductors, this is just the three quarter inch adductors, they have a, a few angles of freedom, a little bit of movement, and I don't know how I'm gonna have them. And, Unlike for the closed loop, I don't have any sweeps. I don't have anything tricky yet. I just have two uh, threaded street elbows to kind of bring the adductor down and to point it this way. So you can see that this is a pretty decent amount of water flow so far um, just coming from the returns. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is just kind of scraped up some of the foam can scuzz that has built up from this tank sitting. And right now we have one closed loop right here. This one is on and the water flow is so massive that there's just like this crazy era area of boiling water here. And the plan with this is to have the closed loops be invisible and there be no power heads, right? So when I eventually do the aquascape, I am gonna consider something that's gonna cover both of these closed loop sections. There's gonna be a massive pre-filter on both of them that's gonna be accessible because it needs to be cleaned. Um, but what's really, really exciting is this is pushing so much water that People who have seen this tank running have asked me it was, if it was level because it's literally raising the water level on one side of the tank by about half an inch from about six feet away. So it's clear that the flow system that it, I developed for this tank is working amazingly. The sweeps and the position of the adductors is not necessarily set in stone, right? This is just version one. And I'm gonna have this thing pretty much yeah, all pieced together before I set it up and kind of reset it, if that makes sense, um, with everything it needs, you know, calcium reactor, protein skimmer, filter roll, because I'm just like addicted to those, before I put any corals in there. So um, I don't know what the exact turnover rate of this tank is, because these two pumps will probably, they'll definitely alternate, but they will overlap, right? So it's not just gonna be this one on and then this one on. So I'm thinking, you know, say like 10 minutes on this one and then nine minutes on this one. So they kind of come in and out of synchronization um, and create a little bit more random flow patterns without any actual technically moving parts. So yeah, this tank is coming along. I'm really, really enjoying it. I've got 400 gallons of water and I've been growing some acros over there and collecting SPS corals for a really, really long time. So once this tank is ready, I have the livestock to put into it, but it still need to piece together some of the other core components. So this is gonna be, uh, you know, pretty much about as much water flow as I think you could ever want to put in a reef tank. Um, I don't think that many of the corals currently on display, not the soft corals, the euphilias, the moon corals, or all but a few of the Montiporas could actually handle this much water flow. It's very, it's very rewarding to see this tank full, to have the drain system completely quiet, no leaks. When I finally switched over to some real freaking bulkheads, oh man, that was the hardest part of this thing, was the cheap bulkheads, trying to fix those so they didn't leak, and uh, definitely learn from my mistake and get yourself some good quality name brand bulkheads, which in the aquarium hobby I think is pretty much lifeguard. So um, I hope you enjoyed this technical video and see the progress on the 400 gallon planet aquarium 
hardline Acropora system. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions about this system, um, let me know. I'm still really up in the air on what to do about the Aquascape. I really don't want to use any rock. This is going to be a test tube tank that only has tissue going in it. There's never going to be any base, um, so hopefully we can avoid any kind of coral or reef pesticides. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.